York, New York, big city of dreams. I'm coming, coming, I'm coming straight out. New York, New York, big city of dreams. What's going on? This is Jailers from Nick of Time Show. Here, give you that Nick's talk just in the nick of time. And we are back. <clears throat> Slow new week, news week, though. But, you know, we still going to talk about the stuff that's important to us because that's what we do. We are Nick's fans and we keep you updated. I already told you who I am. I am Jay Ellis. And I have my guy with me. The man. The myth. The legend. The guy with the stats and the facts. Ryan G is in the building. That's right. He's in this damn the building. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> we started. We started. We starting off high energy today. I have a slight headache though, but I refuse to be defeated. Damn it! <laughs> exactly. It's still gonna be a good Get show. Get behind me, Satan. Yes, exactly. Get thee <laughs> behind me and all that stuff. Right. It is a Sunday. We are recording on the Lord's day. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> let's get right to it. It's been slow news today, like I've been saying, or in this few weeks. But some interesting news that recently came out has been reported by Mark Berman. Mark has reported that the Knicks, they've had made drafting a point guard a priority, but have strongly considered a defensive forward, Isaac Coro at Auburn at number eight, to fit Tom Thibodeau's defensive mindset. Now, as you know, Okoro was a guy who was a perimeter defensive guy first, offense second. Ryan, let me know what you, your thoughts on this move might be for you. Well, my thoughts about it is that when watching Okoro's tape, I do like what I see on defense. I did read that a lot of scouts see him as potentially the best defensive player in the draft, which is a positive. Yes. And, and the fact that I just like his energy on defense first and foremost because he really gets after it. Like, you, you can tell that he's the type of player that he puts his heart on defense and that's where he makes his mark. The only thing that concerns me is that, the, to me, the Knicks already have perimeter defenders. Like, we have Frank. We have Dotson, who's pretty good defensively. You know, we have we already have players that can lock the wings if needed. And and my thing is, I don't know how Okoro would, how Okoro would fit in like that, especially the, especially the, with the added fact that he struggles on offense. Right. He's not, he's not necessarily a good shooter. And also I've read that when he slashes to the basket, like he's primarily a slasher. Like he doesn't really have much more to his offensive game. And they said like, he's the type of player where he has to take one or two dribbles. Mm. If he takes any, if he takes any more dribbles than that, then he, he usually gets himself into trouble and turns over the ball. So, the defensive aspect, yeah, I love it. But then when I look at the offense, I'm like, I do think we need shooters, and he doesn't yeah. really fit the mold of a shooter. Yeah, I think that's a lot of Knicks fans' uh, uh, trepidation when they're thinking about the, the prospect of adding Okoro to the squad. We need shooting desperately, and he's not one of those guys. Now, if you hear some scouts talk about him, they'll say. That, you know, he is a guy who can get better at the aspect of the game. It's, they feel like his shot isn't broken, maybe, but um, it'll just take some work. But at this time, it just seems like the least amount of shooters we have on a squad, the harder it will be for people's game to kind of develop and get to that next level, which is the, the big concern. Like, even with the upside, the lack of shooting can kind of stall everybody's development is is the 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 concern here so i mean i wouldn't be super upset at a coral here it's just depending on the role depending on what we have around him but i do feel like guys like vassal will, will work yeah. pretty well who's maybe not the Kawhi leonard level defender that he's room that uh okoro's rumored to be no, but he's still a good defender. And yeah, yeah. you gonna say something? No, oh, the only thing I was gonna say is that you know he's actually a three and D guy. Like, yeah, he get defense and he can shoot the ball, which is I think something more that the Knicks need than just a straight out defender. Exactly. 
and I'm on I'm on I'm on the lines. If Killian's there, grab him and go. I'm I'm all for that. <laughs> and you know, I always still like Kira, uh, and even Toppin is intriguing to me. But yeah, um, I like those guys. But if we get Okoro, listen. At the end of the day, Jay Alex likes the guys who have that thing in their chest. You know what I mean? I, I like the guys who have the heart to to make things happen for it. So I work with guys with heart any day of the week, but um, I would rather a guy who can shoot here personally. That's that's my that's yeah, my same idea. here. Mm-hmm. And and the, and the one thing about a curl too is that when I look at him play. He's a New York City player. Like, if he comes to the Knicks, fans are going to like him just for the simple fact that he puts it on the line on defense. And Oh, yeah. Yeah, just off just off the strength of that. But like like you said, the Knicks need shooting, and he's not a good shooter. So Yeah. Now, there's some scouts who just say Okoro's upside is just so great cause, just because of the athleticism and, and the defense. And, you know, we need him to shut some wings down in this, you know, NBA – wing heavy you know lee that he's he's going to be impactful no matter what so some some scouts say just take him because because he's going to impact you on that side of the ball and just don't look back but you know to each his own to each his yeah. own uh more nicks news though there's been another person who seems to be rising up the draft boards ryan j j scrub Jay's, yes, sir. Yeah, he, he seems to be, he's coming from a small school, seems to be gathering, some, garnering some attention. Some people feel like he might be, you know, a first round pick and maybe in the 20s or so, not, not even just a second round. So, I mean, I want to, I might bring back um some scouts who kind of even further dissect these guys and some others later on but tell me what you think your first impressions is dre jay scrub ryan and what you found out about him yeah well i definitely had to do some research and reading because i'm not familiar with them but from what i initially read about him and watching clips and things of that nature he's basically a player that has a lot of offensive upside Mm -hmm. he they say he could he could score on all three levels like he can finish out the rim with his great athleticism Mm -hmm. he has great touch around the rim He's a good mid-range shooter. He can he, he has a good pull-up game. He's good off the pick and roll, scoring off the pick and roll, and he can shoot the three really well. I think that, I think I read that his previous season, not the season that just passed, the previous season, he shot forty-six percent from three. Woo! Yeesh. Which is, which is crazy. Yeesh. <laughs> <laughs> okay a, all right i'm exactly. awake now i'm awake i'm paying attention i'm, I'm, I'm paying attention all right go ahead exactly and they said that this past season his drop off is him shooting 39 percent from three so what does that tell you right there uh <laughs> if 39 percent from three is you slumping sign me up <laughs> Exactly. And they said that he could score off the dribble and things mm. of that nature. Like, he's just a scorer. And he, and they said in the NBA, he's he's seen as an off-ball scorer more than a guy that's going to have a ball in his hand and creating. Mm. But here, but here's the bad aspect. The defense. That's where most of the concern is. Okay. Because they say that he has the athleticism to become a competent defender down the line. But he said right now he doesn't focus a lot on defense. And mm. because of that, he gets back cut often. He gets Oof. driven past. He gets driven past a lot by players. And he's just not fully engaged on defense, which is an issue with, you know, a lot of young players, especially with this player being at the JUCO level. So that's the, really the only concern about him is the defense. But if you listen to what you if you listen to what the scouts say and if you read up on them, they said that with high level coaching because they said his fundamentals are off so they said with high level coaching he can at least become a player that's going to be a capable score off the ball and he's going to be at least a competent defender high level coaching things that make you go hmm. 
Yeah. <laughs> Do we have any high level coaches? Do we have any of those on the squad, man? We might have a couple. We might have just signed a few Kenny Payne's, Johnny Bryan's time. We might have just we'll get to that later out of high level coaching. We'll get yeah. to that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I like I mean listen if the problem is defense listen I just said I like the guys who have the thing in the chest that beats that I, I love goes like that guys like that that's like that New York trade I'm willing to fight for whatever I want Um, the backdoor cutting thing does not concern me as much because I feel like a lot of young players have problems with you know team defensive schemes and backdoor cuts and over helping and things of that nature Getting blown by one on one. Yeah, that's an issue. That's an issue. <laughs> <laughs> that's an issue. But it depends on what the issue is. Is it a tech? If it's the technique issue, that's one thing. We have coaches here. You can probably teach him that. You can throw him in a G League, and we can, you know, bring him on that way. If it's a heart issue, he's just like whatever. If you don't have the heart to guard somebody one on one, hmm. That's a that's a huge problem. That's a huge problem. But he's so good on offense. He might be worth a draft in G League stash and have him work with some of the Kenny Paynes and the Johnny Bryans and the Tom Thibodeaux and whoever else we're gonna hire on the staff. It might be worth it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Word. <laughs> All right. Not not a lot going on. Moving on to this. This might yeah. be a three minute show today. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> to the Knicks news. All right. And that's, this is NBA news, man, because, you know, we all know that uh, the, the draft, the combine isn't going to be its usual combine. So what is going to happen in the NBA is as of September 28th, the Zoom combine will commence. There'll be video conferences on interviews and from September 28th to October 16th, measurements and testing will be done to the player's nearest facility to their home. Uh, so as far as we know right now, there'll be no Vassal there. There'll be no Cole Anthony there. No Nee Smith there, who some people feel like he might be a better, you know, pick at eight if Knicks get him because he's a shooter. Da, da, da. No Sadiq Bay, And no Pokemon, man. Pokus po 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 <laughs> Pokusevsky <laughs> No Pokemon That's why I call him Pokemon No Pokemon right. man He's not gonna be there man. I would think um, he would be there Since you know He's overseas And not that much tape on him But Yeah Yeah But Killian Hayes will be there So would Halle So would Kira Lewis So will uh, Coral They will be present So Look out for that Interesting to see how those interviews go. I would imagine, though, I don't. I feel like if you've done your homework, I'm not sure how much these Zoom interview combine things can help you, unless it's just that close. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Unless it's just that close. Moving on. So, Ryan. Yes, sir. The Knicks are back, baby. <laughs> we back training camp. Yes, sir. The, the Knicks has commenced their practice. They've been started their individual workouts and group workouts this week. So we've all been blessed to see photos of, of Frank and yeah. RJ looking ripped. <laughs> yes. And mid shooting jumpers and Kenny Wooten. Yo, even your boy Dennis Smith Jr. making an appearance on Nick's Instagram. Hey, acting <laughs> like they're not trying to trade your boy. See, this, see what's happening, yeah, man? They're trying to get that boy a shot for real, for real, Seymour. Like. Exactly. And, and, and also, um, Mr. Spin Move, too. Julius Randle making an appearance on Nick's Instagram as well. Mr. Spinning and Winning, Julius yep. Randle made his <laughs> appearance on Instagram. <laughs> and listen, this is a voluntary group workout, right? He didn't just come to the individuals to see Kenny Payne, because as you know, Kenny Payne used to work in Kentucky with yeah. Julius Randle, and they still have a rapport. But he also stayed for the voluntary group workout. So all you guys who hate on Julius Randle, give him some credit. At least he came to the group. Right? Yeah, give exactly. him some credit. Give him some credit. He's still getting paid the most out of us. He, he should come. Yeah, true that, true that. I know this might be kind of um bad to say, but have you noticed that? Because if you notice, like, all the players that Kenny Payne has um helped out, 
throughout the years. You know, like the list is very extensive and it's a very great list of players that come from Kentucky. Oh, we get into that. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying that doesn't doesn't it seem like that we ended up with the scrubs from Kentucky? You know what? <laughs> you know what? You know what, Ryan? I was going to talk about a little bit of who was who showed up and who didn't to the camp because some yeah. people sh- didn't show up, like Alfred Payton didn't show up, Porter showed up. But screw that, we're gonna get to the we're gonna get to the sauce. <laughs> we're gonna get to the sauce. All right, Kenny Payne. Has been the unofficial star of the bubble. Okay? Let's be clear. Kenny Payne has been the unofficial star of the bubble. I know y'all been watching Jamal Murray. I watching Tyler Hero light up the Celtics. But Kenny Payne has trained all of these guys from his age in Kentucky, man. So, So, it gives Knicks fans like us hope that, man, even if we do have, quote, unquote, the scrubs of the bubble, as Ryan will put it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, Ryan. Jesus Christ. <laughs> maybe, just maybe, Payne can, you know, dust them off and get them out there and see what they can do. Like, look the truck, look at the truck. Can we Yo, read through the people who, who he's trained? Can yeah, we do that? Um, like you said, Tyler Hero. Tyler Hero. Jamal Murray. Cup that boy bad. Yeah, that that man's a killer. Mm-hmm. Um, we also forget that big man who plays for the Lakers. You know who's going to the finals right now. Um, I what's his name again? The, um, for um, and, 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 is it Anthony Davis? Yeah, yeah that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah that guy. <laughs> and then you know, um, even though they got bounced from the bubble, um, this other guy who plays in Phoenix, who's a pretty nice scorer himself. Oh, um, so he was rumored to be traded for Porzingis, but. Book. Yeah, Devin Booker. Yeah, yeah Devin Booker. Yeah, 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 that's what we're talking that guy, about. That guy. Yeah. He all right. He all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> he, he, he decent. He decent. Yeah, I, listen, I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited to actually have an actual development staff for once. And the Tyler Hero performances in the bottle just added to my excitement. Even though we do have, you know, quote, unquote, the scrubs at the bubble <laughs> or the league. We haven't... It's it's been painfully painfully obvious we haven't had actual real development coaches on the squad, and maybe something like that would make a difference for once. Yeah, like right now, I'm gonna say it from now. If he can stop Julius Randle from doing that spin move <laughs> into them in, in the middle of the paint, and he could get Kevin Knox to average at least ten to fifteen points a game, I will call. Kenny Payne Jesus. Black <laughs> Jesus. If he could do that for me, I will call him Black Jesus. We call him Black God. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'll co sign on you. I'll co sign that, man. Word. I'm looking forward to, to your work, Kenny. we looking forward to your work. In other training news, RJ Barrett's new jump shot has been revealed. I repeat, RJ Barrett's new jump shot has been revealed. Now, RJ's been training with uh, trainer Drew Hanlon on his shooting form. We played a video the last time that talked about, you know, taking his elbows and poking them out. Something that is not the traditional way to shoot for lefties, but he feels like it will help RJ. And he's helped other left-handed shooters improve, including uh, Tatum. Okay. Uh, yeah. Also, I believe he helped out Kelly Oubre, if I believe as well. If you see Kelly Oubre's numbers, his numbers rose from the Dolgers to average NBA three point shooting at thirty five percent. So hopefully, he can do the same for RJ and help us all out because God knows Knicks need space, <laughs> <laughs> a whole lot of it. Now, if you missed the breakdown of why RJ changed his shooting mechanics. Here is the audio played once again from Drew. Yeah, so I mean, we've made three real adjustments. The first one is posture. He was very upright, uh, had no legs and no fluidity. So uh, just working on his posture was the first thing that we did. Just making sure we're leaning him forward a little bit, uh, making sure his, his hips are dropped so that he can use his legs and connect his legs to his upper body. The second thing is his pocket. His pocket, you know, was moved in. A lot of coaches like elbow in. The problem is when you have lefties, a lot of lefties don't, 
uh, for whatever reason, uh, you know, shoot with, you know, a good vision. You want a good vision triangle. You want to be able to see the rim with two eyes. And he was blocking his vision, and, and it caused some problems in his shoulder for power. So we moved his elbow out, which I know scares a lot of traditional, uh, you know, kind of basketball coaches. But the truth is I had to do it with Jason Tatum. I've had to do it with a bunch of other shooters. Kelly Oubre, who had a really good year this year. Um, you know, I had to move their elbows out. And so we're following that exact program. So improving his pockets so that he has a good vision triangle, which allows uh, for more source of power. And the third thing was he bunched up his hand on his follow through a lot. And you see that a lot with guys that don't have great touch. They want to kind of stop their shot, you know what I mean, instead of trusting it. And so we're just working on a, cl a clean, straight snap every single time, keeping his hand spread so there's more rotation on the ball and backspin, which will soften his shot and uh, give him some more uh, room for now, some other notable news about the practice. No Mitchell Robinson. He was not. He did do some individual practice, but he did not work out with the group. Uh, it's been rumored that something maybe he's gone away because something happened to, you know, a baby that has been popping up in his IG. Hopefully, it's nothing serious. So, um, yeah, hopefully everything is okay with you, Mitch, and your family. And come back well rested, ready to play, and every the whole family's intact. Oh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm hmm. But although Mitch is not there, somebody else was there. Another shot blocking extraordinaire who has taken over Nick's Twitter by storm. You know what I'm talking about? Shot blocker extraordinaire? Yes. Hmm. Who who are you talking about? Who am I? The Woot man. Kenny Woot is oh, man. Is oh, Kenny Woot. Yeah, Kenny. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nick's defender. We're gonna get into that. I'm gonna get into him <laughs> a little later. But Nick's <laughs> defender. He just he doesn't just defend shots. He's just not the defender room. He defends a lot more than that. We'll get into that later. Word. But Kenny <laughs> Woot in was in the bubble. He's been tweeting. He's been saying he feels like he could learn a lot from these coaches, and that's a welcome sight. And also like the fact that, man, he's been hitting that corner three in the drills. It seems like he's been doing some nice picking, some nice mid rolls, Kenny jump shots in the clips I've seen. So shout out to Kenny Wooten. Hopefully his game expands for the Knicks as well. <laughs> yup. Mm -hmm. All right. So some more tidbits and news. We are going to revisit some old rumors with some new updates. Uh, rumor number one. Fred Van Fleet. The Knicks have been rumored to, you know, want to be interested in Fred Van Fleet like many others have. Uh, Ryan and I, we discussed the value of Fred Van Fleet. Right, Ryan, remember this episode? Yes, I do. You can check out the free agent point guard episodes. And you know what? Probably going to chop that up and post it up later for you guys, too, as well. But um, listen, this guy is a great point guard. Not, I wouldn't call him a pure point guard, which is my trepidation about him. But a guy who can make the basic pass, who can shoot the three, can't necessarily finish your round the room, but gives you around, you know, seven three-point attempts a game while shooting at a pretty high value. Yeah, I love that, right, Ryan? Of course. Of course. Yeah. But the Knicks news is, the rumor is anyway, that the Knicks are prepared to give him $22 million a season. Which would make him the highest paid player on the Knicks. Yeah. Which would make that a no for me, dog, personally. And I, yeah. <laughs> like I said, I, I listen. If you if you if you look at the opinions of Nick's Twitter, we are in the minority. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've seen other guys who respect it who would say they would give him the money, mm -hmm. but I I just can't bring myself mentally to pay him over twenty million dollars a game, like. As, go ahead, Ryan. It's like you want to say something. My whole thing is, I understand. If the Knicks are going to attract free agents, the Knicks are going to have to overpay. Like, that's a given. But to make Van Vliet the highest paid player on your team, 
And then on top of that, the Knicks are trying to rebuild. It's not even like the Knicks have a complete team as it is, and we're just missing like one or two pieces. Right. I don't. I, to me, to me, it doesn't make sense. Like I'm not going to pay a guy twenty two million, and he's not even the best player coming from the team he's coming from, which is like a championship contender. So Van Vliet's a good point guard. I would, I would, I would get him at a cheaper price than that, but over twenty mil. I don't know. Me personally, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. And, and I already did this. I don't think we're going to be able to pull blandly. I mean, unless we do something crazy like that, maybe we will. Because, you know, 26-year-olds chase the bag. That's just how, you know, that, that goes, usually. Yeah. But I'll say this. The counter argument to that, right, Ryan, is what other people are saying is having a point guard who can stretch the floor and shoot that high volume with threes, is going to open up the potential of players like RJ and Mitch who have been stifled thus far because we don't have enough more shooters on this floor. However, to me, what I feel like is going to happen in the long run is, yes, it might develop RJ and Mitch to a certain point, right? But then there's a signaling. I think that's 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 there's a ceiling that happens, all right? RJ gets developed, cool. Mitch gets developed, cool. We want that. Yes. What's gonna to me what's gonna happen is if it's a guy like Van Vliet who's gonna pay twenty two million dollars, to me, for a young player, I feel like it's gonna take years. It's not gonna be twenty two million in the first year and then, you know. Resign him later. If it's a, if he overpay for a one year deal, I don't care. Yeah, I don't care. Give it to him. But if you're gonna overpay for three, f- four years, I'm not. Nah. Because what happens is you you're gonna reach a certain ceiling where people are gonna realize that he's being overpaid, and we won't get be able to get past a certain point. We'll be in that middle. We'll be in. We'll be in that middle territory, Ryan, where we're just like maybe a seven seed mm-hmm. or a six seed and stuck there for a few years and won't be able to move Van Vliet's contract because he's overpaid and we're exactly. just strapped. Exactly. You would have to wait till the final year of his contract, where it's like okay, a team that's in contention will probably take them on because it's the last year of his contract and they know that that contract's going to be off the books when the year's over. But then when you have Van Vliet on a contract for three, four years left and then you see he's not worth the contract, then the Knicks are in limbo. And then on top of that, he's taking up a big chunk of the cap space. The Knicks can't even bring in other players to complement the squad like that. that. That'll probably elevate the team to, you know, higher heights. So Exactly. Yeah, to for Van Vliet, for me to spend over twenty million on a player, he has to be a game changer. Like I have to, like he yeah. has to be a player that when I bring him in, I know for a fact that's plus five ten wins right there. Exactly, at least. Exactly. So, I mean, it is what it is. I don't, I have my own brain. I I go against the grain sometimes. So even though these guys on Nick's Twitter are saying, "Oh yeah, Van Vliet," I no, um, mm-mm. not me. Sorry, bro. Yeah, me. Me neither. Unless it's... If, if you're going to give him 18, 17... All right. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, that's manageable, yeah. I can manage that. What's wrong? What's wrong with it? Once you start getting to the 22s, 3s, and 4s... For, no. I've, mm, it's right. It's like... It's like it's like last call of the club, though. I feel that's what it is. Though. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, right? When I say last call yeah, of the club... Yeah, I know what you it's mean. It's 355... <laughs> All the fine girls are gone. And you looking at a homegirl over here in the corner with the snaggle. Never mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I got 22 million for you, girl. No, nah, I'm good. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> uh, break down like only KOT can. All right. <laughs> All right. Moving on to other weird rumors. Um, oh, yo, I don't even talk about this in the document, Ryan. Chris Paul. There's been details of the Chris Paul rumors um, talked about by Scoop, Scoop B. Uh, he said that the Knicks have put Frank Nilakina 
Kevin Knox, and you know, first round picks on the table for Chris Paul. I, mm, mm, listen, you know how I feel about that, right? Like I already talked about that last time. I'm like, listen, I'm not giving away any picks for a dude who's 36. Yeah, not doing it. Me neither. The I only don't. way, the only way I would do it is if the Knicks were in a position where I know for a fact we bring in Chris Paul, we become championship contenders. That's the only way. But we bring in Chris Paul. The most the Knicks can do is possibly make the eight seed in the play. You know, make the eight seed in the East, and that's not going to cut it if you're going to give up two two first round picks. No, nah, this nah, it's not going to happen. Now, at least I hope it doesn't happen. If anything, I feel like the Knicks are kicking the tires on that deal. Was not necessarily a done deal. At least that's my rationale. That's what I hope. Because if it's a mm, no. If that's the actual offer, I'm going. I'm going to cry. I'm going to be like, this is more the same. Don't do it. Exactly. Don't same do old it. Knicks. <laughs> same old Knicks. So I pass on that. As much as good as Chris Paul is, I just uh, don't do it. Please don't do. It. Can we just? Get, I'm. I'm still good for you know getting a stock guy point guard in here. I'm still good for that, man. I'm still for getting a, a Dragic in here. If you can steal, or homie from the Orlando Magic, who was injured for a year, who shot yeah. pretty good from three. I forgot his name. It's me for right now. But we talked about him earlier. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I'm down for something like that. Stop Gat. Stop Gat. Bring a younger guy along. Yeah. Shoot, even Lamar Peters. Even Lamar Peters. I'm down for that too. Or Jared Harp. Somebody. <laughs> somebody somebody can shoot a three somebody <laughs> <laughs> moving on to another I don't even, do I want to do I want to address this man I mean I mean we can address it shortly I mean we already know the vibes Montrez Harrell man what's okay Montrez Harrell has been rumored the Knicks are interested in Montrez Harrell it seems like the Knicks are interested in everybody I, I get it though I get it the Knicks are usually linked to everybody and it'll be a lot more of that this season because we got a lot of money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, you know, Knicks are going to be interested in Montrez Harrell. Of course, Montrez Harrell is, is a beast. He's, he's killed us in, in games for sure. Uh, for defense, real. Defensive juggernaut, rebounder. Um, I don't know, though. What do you think about it, man? Well, Montrez Harrell is the reigning sixth man of the year, so you know Duke can ball. Obviously, he's a he's a beast in the paint. Um, he has great energy, which is you know a player that you know most teams can use. But like I said, the Knicks issue is spacing, and you bring in Montrez Harrell, he's not going to exactly solve the issue of spacing because he's not a perimeter shooter. He's Facts. a guy that yeah, he's the guy that's more in the paint area or the mid range area. So, is he a good player? Of course he is. Is he what the Knicks need at the moment? Not really. Develop these guys, man. Look, all right, there's a lot of rumors out here for some vets that... The more I'm looking at this Kenny Payne thing, and the more I'm looking at this John Bryan thing, the more I'm just like, you know what? Let's get these young guys in this game, man. Plug in a veteran or two. And let's see what these young guys can do. Yeah. I think I'm on that move, man. Especially because this season is going to be, who knows, two games. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Two games in the playoffs. Yeah, <laughs> man. It's going to be two games in the playoffs. The season is not going to start till January, maybe. The earliest. Or, like, you're going to have 30 games to play, dog. Like, it's not going to be that many games. Exactly. It's just let the kids, just let the kids play. Cause so it's not even gonna be some real season where you're gonna be able to develop and ooh watch the vets work for them. just let the kids play. I'm I'm on that right now, yo. For real. I think I'm gonna let the kids play. Screw screw this screw this. I'm sorry, Tom. You just, you just gotta you just, you just gotta roll with that. I know you like vets, guy, but uh, <laughs> like like the Knicks bought that um development staff for a reason, so you might as well put them to use. Might, put them, might as well put them to work. Might as well work. And speaking yo. of. Yeah, speaking of development staff and other news, 
The Knicks are not done adding to their development staff. There will be more players. I mean, coaches added very slowly because, you know, season ain't going to start for a long time. So they're going to take their time. <laughs> <laughs> but those who are looking right now, we got Johnny Bryant. We got Kenny Payne. We got Mike Woodson. Uh, we have somebody else. Listen, listen this, the Knicks have not. They've had the smallest development staff in the NBA, and we didn't even know it. We didn't even know it. So for guys who were saying, why are we hiring so many coaches? You're used to being – we're used to being so understaffed that you don't realize that we had two little coaches. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so look out for that. More Knicks coaching staff is going to be added very soon. And hopefully that makes a difference. If you have a coach is almost like one on one teaching, almost. Mm-hmm. Come on, you gotta get better, right? You think? Yeah, I mean, the only way is up. The only way is up. Now it is time for one of the favorite parts of the show. Oh, ooh, picks. Ooh, picks are the best Knicks basketball plays of the week. It's the highlights that we like to highlight for you guys and Knicks fans. Um, but there's no Knicks basketball this week. So, you know, what do we have to highlight? Well, not necessarily. I don't want to necessarily highlight Knicks basketball this week. But I do want to highlight a Knicks icon. <laughs> Knicks newly recruited Twitter icon Kenny Wooten gets my ooh for the week. No, he didn't play any ball. He did have some nice little, you know, drill uh, jump shot videos that made me go, ooh, that was cool. But what I really liked about Kenny was he was the defender for Knicks fans and Knicks Nation. No, he's not just blocking shots today. No. He's blocking haters, man. He's got the hater blockers on. Like, he's on Twitter defending us on Willie Nilly. He made a comment about RJ. He was talking about, I wasn't going to say anything, but RJ got snubbed from the rookie teams. And I'm just like, yes, Kenny, yes, tell him, let him know. He went on. He went on to defend other haters who said that the Knicks weren't relevant. And he's like, Oh, last time I checked, aren't the Knicks, you know, top 10 in league in attendance? Like, he, he let the people know where the Knicks stand. He was all over Twitter, very active. And for a guy who just learned how to use Twitter seemingly last week, he is now regarded by Knicks fans as the defender, the savior of, of Knicks Nation and Knicks Twitter. So much so that Knicks fans started... Too mean, Kenny Wooten. <laughs> Shout out to Jeremy Gohan who made this little lovely meme. Uh, yeah, so ooh pick for me goes out to Kenny Wooten, who yeah defended the Knicks fans, defended the people. Get this man on the court. Oh yes, yes, but I do have a uh, um. Well, I do have a I do have kind of a bone to pick with that defense that. Kenny Wooden had with, you know, the Knicks being the most viable franchise and this and that to respond to a fan that said that, you know, the Knicks don't deserve any respect or something along those lines. Mm-hmm. Because my thing is, okay, at the end of the day, what what earns you respect? What earns you relevancy? Is it the value of your franchise or is it wins? And in my opinion, I think that it's wins. And I feel like if the Knicks want that respect, they got to earn that respect on the court, which is what I think. Because to me, franchise is just based, the franchise value is just based on outside factors that has nothing to do with on court production. You know what I mean? So even though I appreciate Kenny Wooden coming to the defense of the franchise, being like, yeah, our franchise is relevant because we're the most viable franchise in the whole NBA and blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, it's like, you know, my guy, if you really want that respect, you got to earn it on the court. That's the only way you're going to get the respect. Bruh. Yo, who you talking to, Ryan? You trying to the vibe right now? We all Knicks. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you know what's funny? I saw you type that on the, on the IG, so I knew where you was going with it. Especially when I saw your face as I started talking about it, I was like, "Oh, you about to say something flagrant?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <sighs> get out of my You two commenters, get out of Ryan Blue. <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe you think he's right. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> well, leave comments below. Am I right or am I wrong? Leave yeah, he's right or right. He's right or wrong. Right. Leave him below. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Move it on. Now it's time for the other favorite part of the show. Bruh. The bruh picks, man. The bruh picks are usually the stupidest, dumbest plays of the week. Doesn't have to be Knicks basketball related. It could be anything in the NBA. Or it could just be light bros as well. Um, Ryan, yes, bro man from the fifth floor. Do you have any bros this week? Oh, I do. I definitely have some bros this week. Mm. Some of these might be kind of old, but you know, we weren't on for we weren't on last week, so I got to bring them back. I had them stored within my memory bank. Okay. My Time to cash. All right. Yes, my first bro pick goes to. Zubat on the Clippers. Bruh. There was, I mean, there was a play, and it was a Clippers and Nuggets series. There was a play where my man was making moves in the paint. He went up with the sky hook towards the basket, and my man sky hooked it over the backboard. Mm. That's number one. Bruh. You gotta love those sky hooks over the basket. That's exactly automatic. Yeah. Mm hmm. The second, bruh. The Clippers again. Paul George. <laughs> now. <laughs> uh, <what? laughs> uh, now, I, I, don't, I don't know what y'all Play like to call P. him. <laughs> I don't know what y'all like to call him. I've heard. Day he off P, us, man. Oh, my he, God. <laughs> he, gave, he gave us something they made play off P, but lately he's been playing, like, way off P. Oh, <laughs> oh my <laughs> <laughs> Stay or, off, P. Stay off yeah, the court, man. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and like, and, and like, what I like to call a pandemic P. Pandemic, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, damn, man. As you know, the Clippers got eliminated. They blew a three-one lead to the Nuggets. They got eliminated in the second round of playoffs. Oh God. And as the Nuggets were down, I mean, as the Clippers were down double digits in the fourth quarter, the ball was passed around. And pandemic P was, <laughs> was had a in panic the attack. Exactly, <laughs> he was he was he was in the corner for the three, wide open. Mm. So now you would think like, yo, this guy's an NBA player. Like he's gonna at least hit the rim. You know what I mean? Like shoot, I'm not an NBA player, but you give me a wide open shot at the in the corner, I'm at least hitting the rim. Mm. My guy shot it from the corner and hit nothing but side backboard Bruh. in the fourth quarter in game seven with the Clippers down double digits. <sighs> choking, man. Choking on Reggie. Mm. That little, yo, he he got it from the internet that week, man. Word. He got <laughs> it. I'm not even going to repeat everything that was said about that, man. Yeah. It was I just know that after the game, he was it was said that he was giving inspirational speeches after the game about staying together and becoming a team. And, and and you know what those guys said when he started talking? All they said was, Bruh. that. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, matter of fact, yo. We need to give him a who's man's is this. Who's man's is this? We haven't said that in a minute. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Because I'm like, <laughs> we haven't said it. I mean, honestly, that is a who's man's in this moment because, yo, oh. if you have a if you have a wide open shot in the corner and you're an NBA player, like, I'm not expecting you to be, I'm not expecting you to hit side backboard. I'm at least expecting you to hit the rim. And my man hit the side of the backboard. Like, yo, that is a definite who's man's is this moment. And then on top of that, you're going to be that, you're, the guy who shot it off the side of the backboard you're supposed to be one of the top players on the team, and you want to give me an inspirational speech after the game is over, and yeah, we blew a three, and we blew a three-one lead. I'm not trying to hear that. <sighs> I'm not trying to hear it, man. Bruh. Not trying to hear you. Nope. I'm with you, man. 
Word. I'm with you. And my last bro. I'm sorry, I gotta get a bit serious for a second. Yeah, um, yeah we knew it was coming. We know. Yeah. We know. Um, my last bro goes to, I guess, the Louisville, Kentucky. I don't, I don't know, judicial system or whatever you want to call it. Um, for not finding any of the officers guilty in the shooting of Breonna Taylor. Absolutely. Yeah, and um. It goes to show you that we still have a long ways to go to get justice in this country as black people. And it was just a disappointing verdict, you know, all around. Yeah, man, I'm not I'm not going not going to hold you, Ryan. Like, I expected to be disappointed. People, I've been expected to be disappointed with this. George Floyd, people say, oh, we, we've progressed. And no, I expected to be disappointed because how do I put this? The laws need to be rewritten. It's basically yeah. what I'm saying. The laws are basically have to be rewritten so it'll be easier to prosecute police officers and people just responsible for killing, you know, innocent people. Point yeah. blank period. And, and until and the laws are rewritten, we're going to be having the same discussion over and over again. Exactly. And I think on first take, Stephen A. Smith, um, he explained it perfectly because he was discussing like the flaw with the law within Louisville, Kentucky, which allowed the police officers to get off without any responsibility whatsoever. Because, you know, Kentucky, I don't know if you want to consider a Midwest state or a Southern state. I guess it depends on, you know, how you look at it, you know, geographically wise and things like that. But they have a stand your ground law, which is, you know, common amongst Southern states. And then on top of that, like, police are allowed to have like a no knock warrant or something or something along those lines and then when you then when you read both laws in its entirety it's just going to cause a lot of issues you yeah. know what i mean and and that's why the police officers weren't found guilty of anything and i think recently um I'm not too versed on the news because I didn't really like read into it. Like I just saw like headlines and things of that nature. But I think a representative within um, Louisville, Kentucky, like submitted um, a revision of the law, mm. where if 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 where if a similar incident like that happens again, like a similar incident to what happened to Breonna Taylor, that you know there's a better chance for police to be held responsible for committing that type of crime you know yeah and just to be clear too that's across the board that's not even just kentucky the laws are written like that across the board where it's just hard to prove by the letter of the law that police have done anything wrong whatsoever like i think what's the numbers i think the police who actually you know serve the sentence or killing someone who's unarmed or wrongfully killing someone is like under 1%, which is insane when you think about it. Yeah. So there's a lot of work to be done. And protect black women, of course. And that's always Black Lives Matter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> that is our show. Hope you enjoyed. Um, yeah, if you listen to us on Dash Radio, shout out to Dash Radio who houses us, or listen to us on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or that noise, definitely, definitely, definitely get on YouTube and, and, and catch the videos that go with it, man. It's definitely worthwhile, man. So go to youtube.com slash Nick Time Show to catch that. You head to the blogs at the Nick Time Show.com. You can follow us on IG at the Nick Time Show. You can follow us on uh, Twitter at the KOT show. And yeah, you can follow me at JLS Draws Things on Instagram as well if you want to. That's J E L L I S Draws Things. Also, shout out, shout out Chuck D, shout out to the OG Chuck D who shouted out uh X Fan TV and Nick Tom show on TNT the other day. Shout yes, out to sir. the OG. Chuck G, salute you for all the support, man. Ryan, where can they find you, bro? Y'all can find me at Sir G is chilling. Sir G is chilling. That is S I R G is C H I L L I N. And yeah, you can follow me on the IG. You know, I'm here. You know, follow me. Yeah, that's it. That's all we got to say. 
We all out of here. Peace. New York, New York, big city of dreams. I'm coming, coming, I'm coming straight out. New York, New York, big city of dreams. N, 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 N